Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to make a script that can identify any footage used inside of compositions in your project. So I have here a very complicated uh, template that I was modifying and it has a ton of pre-comps and I have certain clips that I want to include, but uh, halfway into my edit, I realized I hadn't been keeping things organized. The question is how can I identify which pieces of footage have already been used in compositions and which ones I can now use that haven't been used. The way we're going to do this is by gathering all of the compositions and all the footage uh, inside of our project and then comparing them and giving them a label color. So when we run this, any unused footage will appear orange and we can select specific label colors if we want. And we can also set any footage that isn't used to be a different color so we can discern which ones are which. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the GitHub link and make sure you follow us there for updates on code. I'm always releasing code way ahead on GitHub before the videos come out. Also in the description, you can follow us on Instagram for updates as well. If you'd like to learn more outside these videos, you can join our Discord server and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel and get cool perks at the same time, you can click on join, become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, get cool perks, help us out, and also get Discord status. So let's go ahead and get started writing this script. Uh, there's three main things we're going to need to do. One, gather our compositions. Two, gather our footage. Uh, and three, identify by comparing these two arrays full, full of items, uh, which ones have been used and which ones haven't. So I'm going to create a new script. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a variable called comps. And I'm also going to create a variable called footage. These are both going to be arrays. And I'm going to create a function for each of them to gather the elements. So let's call this one get comps. And we'll call this get footage. Now let's go ahead and define these down below. So we have get comps as a function. And we also have a function called get footage. Now, the next thing we're going to do to get all of our compositions, we're simply going to loop through all of the elements in our project. The way we do that is by saying for var i is equal to one, starting at element number one inside of our project panel. And we're going to go until we reach app.project dot num items and this will give you all of the items that are located here inside of the project panel then we're also going to make uh, an array in here we need to store them in something so we'll just say uh array we already have a global variable called comps so we don't want to call this comps and override it or cause any issues what we're going to do we're going to have a single if statement to check if it's a composition we're going to say if app dot project dot item i or the current item we're looking at in our uh, for loop here we're going to check if it's an instance of a comp item if that's true it's a composition and we want it so we're going to take our array and push app dot project dot item i into the array and pushing just means to add it to the end of the array currently it starts at empty we're going to add an item if it's a comp and continue adding more items then once we're done looping through all of these checking each one if it's a comp item we're going to return our array which is now full of composition items which will now be basically put into this comps variable now we need to do the same thing for get footage so how can we check if something's a piece of footage well, we can check if it has a file reference to it. That is one pretty easy way to do it. I'm going to create another empty array here, which we're going to return at the end. This array is going to be full of all of our footage items. So same thing, we're going to loop through. I can literally just copy and paste this loop here. We're going to loop through all of the items in our project. The first thing we're going to check is if app.project.itemi and instead of checking if it's an instance of something, we're gonna check main source. What this means is that this piece of footage or this item in our project panel has some kind of source, usually on our file system that it's coming from, indicating that it's a piece of footage. We want to check this first because um, actually this can, this can return null and cause issues. So we're gonna have an if statement inside of here just as good measure. Another thing we're gonna check for is if our app.project dot item i dot main source dot file so what we're going to first do is check is if we have a main source the reason we do that is because if we just were to first check does this have a file if it doesn't have a file it's going to 
basically pop up an error because if you have a composition or a folder, there's no reference file to that. So first we wanna make sure that there's some kind of reference to a file, and then we'll check if there is a file. And if that's the case, we have a piece of footage. We'll take our array and push app.project.itemi. Now, next thing, let's make sure these are full of useful information. I'm going to alert my comps, and I'm gonna grab my first comp and grab the name of it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for our footage. I basically just wanna make sure that we're getting valid values here. So if I go ahead and run this, you can see I get a giant array full of comp items. I get media placeholder one, which is a name of one of my compositions. And then I get my giant list of footage items and we have one.jpg indicating that we're getting pretty good results. You could obviously go through, loop through and view them all, but I know that this should work. Now let's go ahead and create our main function that's going to compare our comps to our footage. We're going to say identify used footage. And uh, we're going to pass in our comps and our footage. And then we need to define this here. So we have function identify used footage. We're going to have our compositions. Again, since I have these as global variables, I don't want to uh, use the same names. So I have my compositions and my not English, but footages. And now we need to basically loop through them in a certain way and compare them each time to see uh, in this current composition we're looking at, are any of these footages present? If they are, we need to change the label colors. And the way we can get the label values is by looking at all these. In this example, or in the previous example I showed with the finished script, we set the label to anything that's used to be orange, which is index 11. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And we could say maybe make the unused stuff to be purple. It's really up to us. Um, and as you can see, I just undid everything in one click. So that reminds me, we need to have an app.begin undo group. And we're going to say label used and unused footage and we'll end it app dot end undo group now the first thing we need to do is create a for loop to go through all of our compositions so we'll say for var i is equal to zero and while i is less than our compositions dot length because we are using an array we're going to start at index zero and go until it's less than the length because that's how you can lo easily loop through any array we need to now basically loop through all of the layers within any given composition. So if you wanted to, you could create a variable called this comp. The common thing I like to do, instead of just saying compositions i every time, we can say this comp is equal to compositions i. And this will basically, each time through, this comp will be set to whatever composition we're looking at, just for organization purposes. And now we want to loop through all the layers in this comp. So I'll say var l for layers is equal to 1. And since we start at layer index one, we're gonna go from L is less than or equal to this comp dot num layers. We're gonna loop through the number of layers and increment L each time through. So now what we're gonna do is check the basically source of the current layer we're looking at. So I'm gonna say if this comp dot layer L dot source, this is gonna check if whatever layer we're looking at has a linked source inside the project panel. Examples of this that don't have sources are things like cameras, um, adjustment layers, and other objects that don't have representative items in the project panel. The reason we're going to check this is because it's the first step in knowing if it's a piece of footage. We basically don't want to compare anything to our footage if we know that it's not a piece of footage. Uh, so now we're going to be putting in a third for loop, which I'm going to say var f is equal to zero. And for f is less than our footages dot length, increment f by one. Now that we're looking at a current layer, let's go ahead and say it's this layer right here. We can now look through and compare it to all of the footage we found. And if it matches that footage, we know it exists in a composition because we've gone through all the trouble of going into our compositions, the layers in our composition, and this definitely has a source. So if we've looked inside of a composition and now we're back in the project panel, looking at it and we find a match, that means it's used and we wanna set the label color. So what I'm gonna do is grab this comp.layerl.source and I'm gonna compare if it's equal to footages f. And this needs to be in an if statement because I'm gonna compare uh, the source from our layer and the footages. If these are equal to each other or if they're the same thing, 
then we're going to have a match and we know it's used. This is our basic uh, identifier deep down that shows us this is used in a composition. So I'm going to say, let's go ahead and just say this comp dot layer L dot source dot label is equal to 11. So what this should do if I was to run it now is run through and already identify all of the things that are used. In my case, I actually don't have any that are unused. So what I'm going to do is just delete a few of them and now run it. And you can see we have a couple of orange and a bunch of yellow ones. The yellow ones are just left from their original color. So what can we now do to identify the non linked ones? Uh, well, again, we're going to use purple, which the label index is 10 instead of 11. And actually what I'm going to do is go outside of all these loops. For all intents and purposes, this, uh, these three nested loops are going to be just to identify the used pieces of footage. To identify the unused pieces, I'm going to loop through my footage. So for bar i is equal to zero, i is less than our footages dot length, increment i by one. And how are we gonna tell if it's unused at this point? Well, we know that if it's used, the label is 11. So what we can say is if footages i dot label does not equal 11, or if the current label for the footage we're looking at isn't orange, it's unused. And what we're going to do is set footages I dot label equal to whatever we want uh, the other color to be in this case purple. So let's go ahead and undo this and run it. And now you can see instead of keeping those original yellow colors, we now can see that these are identifiable as purple or whatever color you choose. And you can go through and change, you know, whatever labeling color scheme you want to use. As long as you make sure you update um, all of the other information, such as dot label does not equal, needs to be five in this case. And you can change up the color scheme of how you want to identify used and unused items. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this on GitHub, download it, and make sure to follow us there as well as I post code much earlier in advance on GitHub. In the description as well, you can follow us on Instagram for other updates. If you want to get help outside these videos, you can join the Discord server, link in the description, get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel and get cool perks at the same time, you can become a member, link in the description, a supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, those are different tier levels. Thanks again for watching everyone, we'll see you next time.